に売れるぞではトップはそれでいや待てなんというビッグニューススキッピー here and welcome to One Piece episode 958. Directed by Hikaru Takeuchi from Yutaka Nakashima's board and supervised by Ipe Masui, Song Hyung Ju, and Hyun Yoon Mi from Kawanuri Animation. After a real episode of the year contender that blew the socks off of everyone watching it, it's only natural to expect the very next episode that follows it to be a bit of a downgrade. As the studio that this episode is mainly being outsourced to, Magic Buzz has not had the best track record as a support studio and especially on One Piece. With their return to the anime after many years in form of 947 not being any better than their participation in Annie's Lobby. However, that was mostly due to Akitaro Daichi's storyboard being quite Lacking on many fronts, so I don't think the blame can be entirely laid on them. So, when this time around Daichi is nowhere to be seen as he's instead boarding Digimon Adventure 2020 episodes now, that opens up the possibility of this episode being a whole lot better than their previous outing, which is entirely possible since Yutaka Nakashima's board that will act as the guideline for it looks as colorful and vibrant as ever. They also have more manpower in former Korean studio Kawanuri Animation helping out this time, that will certainly divvy up the workload. But I'm still keeping my expectations in check. Now, I'm definitely not expecting anything amazing animation wise, but since it's already much better than 947 at a base level, I have faith that the ball won't be dropped on this quite literally ultimate content. So, will episode 958 be a small surprise following such a titanic masterpiece of an episode? Let's grab the wanted posters and find out. This episode covers the entirety of chapter 957, and it shows a tad bit more than the manga did in regards to the Sea King fight on Fujitora's end and the fight with Garp and Rocks before it's revealed that Roger assisted him. But other than that, it is the most by the numbers you can get in terms of literally lifting pages and panels straight from the manga and putting them on screen. Nothing really feels that much more bombastic than what the original content had to offer. And while that's certainly not bad in terms of the content as it is that a lot of people like being preserved, It just feels kind of bland, and you're not really getting anything from it that you wouldn't be getting from just reading the manga. Sure, there's the added factor of voice acting and original soundtrack, and Sengoku and Akainu's seiyus hit the mark as per usual, but the OST choices from Takeuchi fall under generic more often than not, as if they were chosen from a greatest hits playlist for the series, and only really add to that meh feeling. It's certainly not horrible because the pacing is a lot better than usual, and the storyboard, despite some pitfalls that will soon Cover is pretty, but I really wish it was slightly more creative in terms of what it can really do to expand upon the content while not outright showing the fight between Roger, Garp, and Rox, so it just leaves me with an expected but still ho hum and bland feeling. Even if the board itself was a bit worse than expected, with most of the first half feeling really flat in terms of scale and the lack of depth of field, the second half was a pretty good improvement in terms of the general compositions being more interesting, even if it wasn't much. And there were some cool ideas in terms of visual symbolism on top of Nakashima's usual color work, like when God Valley being wiped away from the world government's records is shown via the island itself disappearing after the video cuts and stutters. It may be among the weakest of Nakashima's boards thus far, but it's still a whole lot better at being a visually interesting guideline than Daiji's board was, and there's only so much that your average director can really do with a chapter that's packed full of dialogue and exposition after dialogue and exposition. However, the composite itself is pretty tame outside of the show's base photography in a few small instances, so it definitely doesn't do it many favors, and I wish Takeuchi was a bit more photography savvy so it didn't feel so bare. With corrections from our three supervisors that look really consistent at the very least, 
space between all three, 958 is just okay. I really do wish that it had more than what it did, even if it is outsourced to two different studios and following one of the best, if not the best episode in the series, but it wasn't boring or a total chore to watch for me like 947 was, because it at least had some stuff that kept me a bit interested beyond the content, but this certainly isn't winning any awards otherwise, and I think I'm just going to not expect more than what is needed for any future Magic Bus or Kalinari episodes. Next week though, we finally head back into Wano after this brief detour to start Act 3 with episode 959. The preview itself doesn't show too very much, but what it does show of Yusuke Suzuki's storyboard and direction looks very immersive and fun, as his rebounding quality hopefully continues. And as always, Shuichi Ito's corrections look as pleasantly pancake as ever, and it seems like Midori Matsuda may actually be correcting someone other than Zoro once again. When it looks like they're covering a fair bit more than usual in terms of sheer page count, I'm definitely looking forward to the curtains rising again once more to head into one of the most exciting acts in the entire arc. Anyways guys, that's it for now, I'm Skippy, and man, you just cut a love Sengoku's goat.